found Aho Radio, where authentic human outliers come in together to help heal the fear of being authentic, to bring back genuine human conversation. No hype, no sensationalism, just honest talk about the critical issues affecting society, affecting humankind. And now, here are the hosts of Aho Radio, John Karotek and Bill Peratzman. Oh, brother. Hey, Bill. How's it going out on the West Coast? It's going to be hot today, man. It's getting all the way up almost to 90, as you can see yeah. by the sun on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You know, I'm. Um, it, it rained here a few days. You know, that crystal ball went up through the middle of the, the Gulf Coast or along the Gulf Coast. And uh, hearts and prayers go out to all the people that may have gotten smashed by that storm. But yeah. every time I hear that drum music and we get queued up for another episode, and I'm really excited about this one. I, it just gets my blood flowing. You know, we have a, uh, it's getting gritty out there. And we're going to talk a lot about grit because we need it these days, don't we? Yes, sir. So we have today with us, actually, she's over in central Florida, but she hails from upstate New York, somewhere up that way. Uh, her name is Lori Sudrink. Yep. You know, I don't want to mess up her name. And she, uh, she's, she's got one heck of a story, uh, a story of, you know, like camp hard knocks and, and things like that. And, her whole, um, her whole message is tapping into uh, the gritty side of life and the gritty side of what we've got and expose some grit because that's what it takes uh, to deal with these challenges that, we're, that we have in life. All of us, none of us are immune from them. True. So yeah, here we yeah. Are. I, I, I'm listening to that and going like the challenges in life, like COVID, uh, the racial stuff. It's like the challenges in life. You know, none of us are immune right now, dude. <laughs> I mean, it just, you know, well, even childhood pains or, you know, work okay. or divorce or, you know, the things that affect all of us, you know, about we're going to be able to make the bill this month, you know, uh, you know, financial ruin. Oh, I was bullied as a kid. And, you know, resilience is the key to all this, but uh, you know, I want to hear what Lori has to say because, this is one strong lady and uh, she's got one strong message and I'm just blessed to have her here with this bill. Absolutely. Let's, let's find out what that is. So Lori, what, what's your message? Like you have a chance to tell the world one thing. What is it? Get your grit together, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now that means something different though to you because what's that rhyme with? No, it's, I get yeah. that. <laughs> It does, you know, and thank you, first of all, for having me on the show. It's my, yeah, my honor yeah. and my pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, grit is, uh, it's not your typical grit. You know, it's not, um, it's not just that passion and perseverance and that tenacity and that, you know, driving towards something. It's, it's, it's deeper than that. It's going inside to be able to say, you know, how are we really going to be able to get what we want out of life? Or if we're a leader in an organization, how are we really going to be effective with people? And I know firsthand from a lot of, uh, we'll call them experiences, mistakes, whatever we want, that just having that traditional grit causes a lot of collateral damage. You know, we, sure, we yeah. end up just pushing toward one thing, right? And we're not really balanced in, in looking at the whole picture. And often we're not even taking the time to look inside ourselves to figure out what's really going on and how are we impacting others around us. I'm really curious let me just, how, let me, John, I've got to ask this question because it's, got, it's right on the top of my head. John's veteran. I've done a lot of volunteer work with veterans, big military family, and you've worked with actually with the Department of Defense, real life people in command doing stuff. So. I mean, that's a pretty gritty environment, mm -hmm. but, but if it's more than just being a gritty environment, how do you sort of guide people? What, what, what part of your journey helps people change from being the, you know, the, the, the tough commander to being the authentic leader? Yeah. So just, and just you know, to paraphrase real quick, you know, yeah. how do you take bad grit? And turn it into good grit. I think. Oh, well, yeah. 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 You, know? yeah. you got me going on the grit thing. So yeah. <laughs> I love all the the grit talk. Yeah. Well, you know, I when you were talking about that, Bill, I just remembered my first time walking into, and it wasn't a Department of Vet in this situation, but it was the Department of Navy, and I had active duty civilian, and and I was going in there to do some training uh, in the classroom, and I had some really tough guys sitting in there like this. 
you know, and it was like, oh man, <laughs> you know, like, and, and they, what they were communicating to me, not in these exact words was, you know, what are you, what are you going to teach me? I've been through it all kind of thing. And, you know, I think the, the most important thing for us all to do is to be human and connect with each other and to be able to show like what I do when I go in the classroom, especially in a situation like that, is to show that I'm here for you and I'm not here to tell you anything. I'm here to open up, have a conversation and see if there's anything that we might discover together that's going to help your journey to move forward and make you happier, more successful, um, more productive, whatever it is that you want to get some of those roadblocks out of the way. Uh, because that's what's really happening with us. There's stuff inside here that's not allowing us to move forward. And sometimes that typical grit, it's it gets in the way because what we're doing is we're just staying laser focused on one area and we think we've got to be so tough and strong and and we and we feel like we can't be vulnerable and we can't make mistakes and we have to be perfect. And it's not about that at all. It's more about being able to really understand ourselves and know ourselves and accept ourselves so that we can then respect other people and be in integrity and being able to give to other people. Um, so, you know, the, the, the typical grit can cause a lot of collateral damage. And I don't mean just to other people. It can cause that damage to ourselves, you know, to our health, to our relationships, because again, we're pushing so hard in one area that it's not helping us to, to really connect and relate and give to other people. Let's do this. You know, that's awesome. Let's do this. Cause I know it's an acronym. I know that your grit yeah. <laughs> philosophy and program is an acronym. So can you maybe go through the letters of that and maybe relate a life experience, an example maybe of your own or something that you've seen in the grit process? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because like I've been talking about, you know, just, just the typical grit um, isn't enough, but it is about sticking with it and that, you know, keep, keep going that that tenacity kind of thing but it's how we do it and if we're if we want to be able to give to other people that's the g for generosity we've got to be able to respect ourselves and others and then you know it, it's also about integrity which is aligning to your truth truth is where it starts and so even though the acronym is generosity respect integrity and truth in order to be authentically generous and gritty, we've got to start with our truth. And we've got to be able to look inside and accept and know really who we are and what we're about. And, you know, for me personally, it's been a journey of that, you know, it's, it's still going on, you know, so I'm not yeah. going to ever say that, you know, you arrive and you're done. And I don't believe that. I believe this life is a journey. But I can remember back years ago when I first started to even recognize the concept of who am I and, and what are my thoughts and my beliefs that are driving my actions and, and you know and, and my emotions and all of that. And and I, you know, I had a professor back when I was in college. His name was uh, Dr. Thomas Marnica. And he was the first one that introduced me to concepts like, you know, not making assumptions and not taking things personally and dig, digging deeper into what your emotions are telling you and to, to wake up to, you know, who you are. And so being able to do that is a powerful thing, but it's also, it's a responsibility. And, you know, I can remember starting to be awake like that and starting to be self-aware like that and thinking, I don't know, maybe ignorance is bliss, you know, <laughs> maybe I don't want to know this stuff, you know, then I, because then I have choice and then it's up to me to really do something about that. And that's yeah. integrity. But I want to stick with truth for a minute because our truth is, is, is our truth, you know, and it's, it, it's something that most of us, at least in my experience, you know, we, we don't find that truth until there's some kind of catastrophe. We don't look there until there's something that 
that goes wrong in our life in some way, you know, maybe someone passes away or you get really sick or, and you get that awareness and then you start to really look inside and, and, and I just put it out there. What if we could have that without the catastrophe, you know, the catastrophes happen um, and we make the best of it. And hopefully we learn from those things and like what's going on in the world right now, even just being able to look at that and look inside and look at ourselves and go, you know, what, what do I think and really believe about this and how am I going to react with this? You know, how am I going to react to this? But until we are really aware of what's happening in here, we're not going to be able to even have a choice over how we react to the things out there. And for you know, I just wanted to say real quick, you know, you're bringing the light, you know, the greatest challenge that all of us have, which is patience. Mm -hmm. oh. And personal transformation is a process. And unfortunately, which hurts, which mm -hmm. can hurt, oh, yeah. you know, to look at that person in the mirror and what you're describing, you know, I'm reminded of the Beatles song, The Long and Winding Road, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the imagery is there. And what you're saying, Lori, is that it takes real truth which is that personal honesty and to realize it's a process you know you're you're making me realize that it just dawned on me here i am almost 61 years old i'm thinking holy cow she's talking about process and patience yeah that's I, why people don't get gritty i think sometimes i couldn't agree more and that was it, it continues to be and was probably my biggest journey it was the patience and the courage to look and to, to not resist what's there, to accept what's there, to not try to ignore what's there. And, you know, I, when I was really young, before I can even consciously remember, and I had to do a lot of work with therapists and energy workers and stuff to, to get beyond this, but I was taken from my mother by my father who mm. ran away with another woman. And that, to me was one of the, the things that I think impacted a lot of my earlier years to my early twenties. Um, I think I was angry about that. I think I was, I felt betrayed because of that. Lots of, lots of emotions there that caused me to act out to other people. I mean, the, you know, I, I was, I was angry. There was definitely anger there. And then there was alcohol, of course, to, to try to, you know, be with the, the cool crowd, but also to try to mask that and not, not have to deal with that kind of stuff. Right. You know, and I, I, I think like things that are happening in our world, we can look at that and, and the way we react to that is a great opportunity for awareness to go, where am I right now in how I know and accept myself, for example, you know, fears and stuff that it triggers wounds that we have in here and we react to that. Um, and we, you know, we, we feel like we don't even have control of it, but the, the, the best gift to me in life is that self-awareness of being able to courageously look inside, accept ourselves and say, what do I want to change or what don't I want to change and lighten up about it, you know, and not not take it so seriously because I go back to what we were talking about earlier. It's a journey. This is a, this is like, this is a test. This is only a test, you know? Right. Like, right. But sometimes yeah. it looks pretty ugly. So um, oh, I mean, what do you say to somebody who is, what are you, I, I know what I would say, but what, what, what would you say to somebody who's right at the start of that journey and standing on that threshold of fear and self-acceptance and anger and just like, you know, what it feels like to be in that place because we've all yeah. been there, right? That's like the, the vulnerable place. But what would you say to somebody in that place? I would say, love yourself. Be which which like, yourself. I, I'm going to be the devil's advocate, but how? Like, what, what would I do? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're starting to feel those emotions, yeah. you know, I think that's the best opportunity to say, what's going on with me right now? Just, just pause, just say, what's, what is that triggering? What is it hitting? What wound is it getting inside of me? What am I afraid of? What, you know, what is happening here? Just 
be very curious about yourself for a minute and pause and, and, and that patience. I mean, that is, that's probably the word of the day because it's, it's hard not to have something, something hits a wound and we, we don't pause and even realize there's a wound there. And instead we just automatically react to it yeah, we and kick. we fight it you... and we kick and it's, you know, it's that, yeah, I, and I'm angry and I'm whatever that emotion is, but I'm going to express it outward because I haven't learned how to express it inward. In fact, so many of us are taught that when we're kids, even when you're angry, punch something, you know, get that punching bag, scream in that pillow. And I don't know anymore about that. <laughs> I don't know if that's what we should be doing. Maybe, maybe we should be teaching our children how to take a deep breath and look inside and walk out in nature and, you know, do some things that might be more constructive. Because yeah. we, <laughs> like, an, like, an interrupt, like, like an interrupt, but you know, like personal responsibility, you're bringing so many things to light. Lord. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, there's a book out there called no excuses. Right. And I, I loaned this book to a business buddy of mine. I said, you're going to love this. Read the book, check it out. Three months later, I asked him, Hey, did you get a chance to read the book? And he looks at me, deadpan face. And I knew he, he hadn't read the book. <laughs> and, and, and I said, well, you know, what's going on? Well, well, you know, this came up and that came up. And I said, the reason I gave you the book was exactly the, for the answers that you're giving me now. There's no excuses for the lack of responsibility of not reading that book. So what you're telling me, what you're voicing right now, what Bill just raised is that, you know, there's a certain, and it's easier said than done. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've been in the fist fights. I've got a scar up here somewhere, but I know what anger is all about. I've acted out with alcohol. I've been pained and hurt like everybody else, but it took me a long, long time to realize that I'm responsible for me. That's right. And if I keep going and getting in fights and scarring up this body and this face of mine, who's responsible for that? Right. The guy that hit me or the guy that I mouthed off to. So self-responsibility and yeah. every single human being, Lori, and you know this, I know Bill knows this. We have choices. Mm -hmm. Be angry, go out there, protest, stand for something, but don't take it to the point where you inflict pain and suffering on a fellow human being. I, I, I don't buy that excuse. No, I couldn't agree. Sorry. I just, you know, sorry. Yeah, no, that's, it's, it's fantastic. And it's so relevant to everything we're talking about and today and I couldn't agree more that you know we all we all have these wounds and what's happening today to me I sit back and go how someone's reacting to that is a reflection of what's going on in here and how much they're aware or not aware of that and 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 I I agree I couldn't agree more with the first amendment and the expression of uh, you know, our right to express ourselves and be passionate about things. But I do draw the line when it comes to destruction and hurting another human being and even another person's property. I do. I draw the line there. I understand the anger, but I do not condone it. And I cannot say that this is a good thing to be doing. I don't think it's helping anyone. I, you know, yes, it's getting attention. Yes, it's doing that. But what kind of attention do you want? Do you want people to think that this is the only way that you can react? You know, it, I don't know. Like I, it gets lost. The message gets lost in the behavior. Yeah. And, and, and I, I couldn't, you know, Bill and I've had this discussion. We both agree with you that there's got to be a different. You know, and sometimes I feel that we, the people, you know, I'm, I'm a, I, I love the Constitution. Uh, we, the people, sometimes get in the, we get stuck in the middle and we can blame it on both sides. But the reality of it is, and what you're saying here and what we're discussing is personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. And, and there are times, you know, I've read this somewhere, there are times to be gritty and there's times to be soft. There's yeah. times of war and there's times of peace. And, you know, I think it's been around a lot longer than me. And, and you know, you have to be able to gauge that. Joe Dispenza, who we all love and know. I love him. <laughs> and talks about these triggers. Mm -hmm. You're driving down the road and you're starting to feel yeah. that feeling. And you know you want to act out. Like, 
-hmm. And what do you do? And what does he say? It's an interrupt. Change. Yeah. And what you're saying is very similar. Get gritty. Yeah, you have the power. That is freedom, right? I mean, that to me, the opportunity to be aware and make a choice of how you want to react to something is the greatest freedom in the world. It's the greatest freedom we have. And the people that in, inspire us are those people that can rise above that knee jerk reaction. That's not easy to do. It's easier to just scream and holler and, and lash out. That's, that's easier to do. What's harder to do is to rise above that and really, you know, get gritty, like you said. And, and you know, that, so the, I go back to the truth of it. The truth is understanding all of what we just talked about and how, how we accept or resist that, you know, and then you go to integrity and in, integrity is about aligning to that truth. That's a tough so, one for people. It is. Me too. You know, I've had that problem sometimes too, <laughs> you know, like personal integrity and yeah. yeah. So Lori, tell us a story, Lori, about uh, when you were new at this, when you, before you had it all like laid out and put together and you know, packaged and productized. But when did it feel like for you in, in that story to, to make this awareness for the first time? Yeah. Oh, so many, so many stories, you know, and, and for the record, I continue to have stories. Right, right. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm going, right? I want to go back to this. Like, yeah, but let's go way story back. Number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and I think about um, just the, the awareness of what you're doing and what you say you believe. And one that pops into my mind is um, when I was back working in a company upstate New York, and I had gone from working on the factory floor with all the cool kids. You know, I worked second shift. We used to be able to listen to music and work on the factory line. I got moved out front by choice because I wanted to advance. I was taking college courses. And so I, was walking into the reception area, this rainy, you know, it rains really hard and your umbrella does no good. And in fact, my umbrella had, had like gone upside down. I had dropped things in a, a puddle. I was just not in a good mood at all. And I was just trying to get in the door and our overly optimistic receptionist, Pat says, Oh, good morning, Lori. How are you this morning? And I just remember just going, just, I'm having a bad day, Pat, you know, and I'm trying to get past her. And she goes, wow. And it's only 7 a.m. And I seriously wanted to be violent in that moment. <laughs> I wanted to joke yeah. her. I wanted to just be like, really, you're going to put this in my face. And, but for, I, I, I still, to this day, don't know why, but I stopped. And I just, I had this awareness that I was doing this. I was creating this story in my mind and creating all this toxicity. And it started to make me so aware of the things that I was saying and doing and reacting and pushing people's buttons and all of those things in life that I had some influence over. Now, I don't have control over anyone else, but I certainly have a relationship to this. So I, I remember that just, just going, wow, you know, like I can decide right here in this moment. Now it doesn't mean that I can just go, Oh, nothing happened, you know, and put my head up in the clouds and not pay attention to anything. It means that I don't hold on to it. I don't, I, I feel it. I express it. I let it go, you know, and I can tell you so many stories of being being aware of it. I mean, I, I've had things happen in my classroom where I've reacted to something. I wasn't in integrity with something. Can't think of it right off the top of my head, but I've had to sit there and, and say to them, see, I'm still doing it. <laughs> you know, I am not all the way there yet. And that's not what integrity is about. It's not that unattainable definition of perfection. It's about 
being real, being authentic, doing the best that we can in that situation to align to what we say is our truth. That, that you know, place, that vulnerable place. Yeah. yeah. And the alignment, you know, finding that compass, the magnet that, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people, they say a lot of different things, but you know, the true North, you know, which is right. what your core value sets are. And, and, you know, one thing that you said that we all understand and anybody listening, you know, this is not, this, this is a journey and this doesn't happen overnight. If it did, we'd all be right now in Bora Bora drinking a pina colada and life would be grand, right? Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I'm ready. So, but, but you know, it, it's not like that. It, yeah. it, it takes yeah. falling down and getting back up. Oh I think God. there is a Chinese proverb, fall down six, get up seven, something like that. And it doesn't, you know, there's no instant gratification and those moments of instant gratification only last an instant you know, it still doesn't fix the alignment part. No. And I used to think that too, you know, you mentioned pain and alcohol and so many people do that, you know, I'm not al alone, but to hide the pain in that thinking that that's the way of it's going to be right. Yeah. So yeah. discovering, I, I love that. I love the story that you shared because you, you've, everybody in the world out there that's listening to this and being honest with themselves has had something like that happen where they've had to catch themselves. I go, holy, holy grit. You know, I, I, what am I doing? <laughs> holy grit. I love it. Holy you know, grit. Write that down. You know, you, yeah, yeah. Holy grit. You know, I, I, and I can't, and I do have this bad boy. I had a, a real close friend of mine text me this morning and I was like, you know, I don't know about this today. I don't know what's going on. And she goes, John, you got this. What the hell are you worried about? And if we could say that to every single human being in the message of grit, hey, you got this. Yeah. Seriously, you got yeah. this. Stop this. Yep. Yeah, you know, and I, so many great nuggets there. And I go back to just really appreciating that question, Bill, because, you know, it's, you do sometimes forget and it's so humbling and important to remember that we are all on a journey and we are on different places of that journey and my chiropractor recently said to me she said you know i really feel that you're because she's an energy worker too and she said i i don't feel the fear i don't feel that you have fear going on and i said you know i really don't have any fear going on right now and i know that 20 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, who knows, maybe even five years ago, I can't measure it, you know, succinctly. This would have scared the crap out of me. Oh, yeah. You know? And it's just the work that I've done. That's all. It's not anything other than that. I put in a lot of hard work from being aware and then taking action on that, you know, and um, doing energy work, uh, working with Don Miguel Ruiz of the four agreements, going awesome. to really intense retreats, you know, and, and, and meditation and yoga and, and eating good. And, you know, all of those things that in the beginning, when I was doing it, it was painful. It hurt. It was easier to just go out and party and forget about it, you know, and have, well, fun. you know, you, you know, you <laughs> use the four letter word, you know, work Yeah. and, and, and it's, um, it does. It takes work. You know, I can remember my own path going through cognitive behavioral therapy after three months, you know, the therapist yes. is looking at me and she's smiling and I'm like, Cheryl, what are you smiling at me for? She says, you're doing the work mm -hmm. and it makes me smile. Yeah. And you know what, Lori? Yeah. It's not easy. It's not, but it's rewarding. It is rewarding, you know, and when, every time I catch myself now, not in integrity, not respecting myself or someone else, whatever, what, you know, whether it's truth, integrity, respect, or generosity, I can now look at it and not beat myself up and go down this slippery slope of being a victim. Instead, exactly. yeah, I can go, oh, wow. Yep. Still human. Still got things to learn. So, so <laughs> let's put you in front of a victim right now. I don't know, whatever victim it is. Let's put you in front of that victim. And you have to offer that, that suffering person advice. Yeah. 
and and you know that you have to tell them that this is only one step along the way. Like you're going to go through this process where you feel like a victim and then another one's going to come along. You're going to feel like that again. It's just going to be like that for the rest of your life. And and it's not a, it's you know, it's a tough sell. Mm -hmm. But that's the process. So how do you sell that? How do you how do you tell a person who's in that place, Bill, you know, like this will pass. But there's got to be a bigger reason. Right. How do you how do you get through to the victim and, and unlock the opportunity? Such a great question, you know, and it's, it really depends on where they are. And I try to meet people, you know, kind of meet them where they are and ask questions that they can reflect and feel and relate to in some way so that maybe they can come just to the next level, you know? And I think the worst thing we can do, and sometimes I'm guilty of this, I forget, is try to take them too far or try to expect that they're going to go too far, you know, come here. Um, and, and they, then they don't feel your intention of what you're, you know, trying to do because your intent is inside our intent. You know, my, my intention is to help someone else with an awareness and have choice to get rid of those chains that shackle them to be free to react the way they really want to react so that not just short term but long term they're going to be they're going to be good because of that they're going to feel good because of that they're going to have some you know they're going to have some better result because of that and to do that it really to me just takes being in the moment really wanting to help someone and being willing and this took me so much work being willing to let go of that and realize that you may not be able to help that person. That might not be where they are. I think that was one of my hardest lessons in life. I always saw the potential in a person, relationships, you name it. You know, I could see the potential. Oh, I know that. And I, even in the work, when I started my business in 1999, I remember feeling really great when the class went great or the coaching went great. And when it didn't, or someone didn't have that experience, really feeling like I didn't do my work or my job. And it took me a long time to not take that personally, not think that you have some kind of power and control over another person. All you have is what you have here and your intent and you, and you try and help them, but maybe that's not their journey. Maybe they need to suffer right now. You know, you think about my journey. Maybe I needed to suffer and go through everything that I went through and not regret anything in my past life because I wouldn't be where I am now. Um, yeah. So it's, it's so devil's advocate again, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> but, but, but Lori, my, my shop was just looted. Mm -hmm. I don't have a livelihood. People who depended on me, not only for what I'm selling in the store, but for an income, um, no longer can depend on me. I, I've just been completely taken apart. Uh, and yet you're telling me that I'm going to go through this over and over. Yeah. How do I, I mean, what today, what do I do? You know, what, what? Mm, yeah. let me, yeah. And I got a couple of comments to add before you answer that, but you know, yeah. two things based on what you just said, one of them is we're all on a different trajectory and an interesting book. We like to introduce books and songs, but one of them is, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's called, the Tibetan book of the dead. And it fully describes this, the trajectories that people are on. Another one that you said, and I'm, and I'm going to pull this book out. It's called, well, it's called the power of moments. And the power of moments is about empowering people to enjoy those moments. Even when your shop's been looted. Yeah. So even when, it, yes, but go ahead. I want to hear it from Lori, but you, it, yes, yeah. because, you got, you know, it's called whoever suffers the best and, and it's a choice that we make. And yeah, it sucks. I'm, it's easier for me to say, cause my store hasn't been looted, right. but to say that it, something doesn't happen more terrible a week from now. Yeah. And do I have the skill sets to get through that anyhow? But, but I want Lori, I want to hear Lori's answer. Yeah. But. Well, you know, and I, I, and it does depend on the energy and the emotion that's coming from that person. But, you know, to me, it's like it, it's helping them to get to feel that emotion and express themselves. First, listening, 
hearing somebody really being in the moment with that person. Yeah, that sucks. It's hard. You didn't deserve this. This is not about you. This is, you know, this is something that's happening right now. And it's something that we can't control right now. And if we try to control that, that's where the anger is going to come in and the frustration and the, and so realizing that not taking it personally and, 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 and not, and, and feeling like you can't control it doesn't mean though, that you have to put up with it and just go, oh, it's okay. Burn my shop, kill my brother, you know, do it's a, it, no, it's not about that. It's be, if we don't take it personally and, and we can just acknowledge the emotion, but acknowledge the reality of it, we will have the capacity to go inside and be able to express ourselves in a way that will make a bigger difference. And so what can we do about this? We, what can we do about this that might be able to impact us in some way? And guess what? You know, and again, it depends on where this person is, but I might go as far as saying, yeah, it's a journey and you're going to have more tough speed bumps, roadblocks, crashes. It's going to happen. And we're all going to be okay because at the end, we are all going to die. And, and you know, that's so, that's so true. That's one thing that people tend to forget. And the whole Tibetan Book of the Dead is about how to prepare yourself for death. And people are Something that, that. And we're afraid of that. And the minute, yeah. and it is so much easier said than done because we don't know how we're going to go. No. But this world, you know, it's, I look at Hurricane Andrew back in 1991, through no fault of their own. You know, 200 tornadoes were recorded inside the eye wall mm -hmm. and it just devastated. You know, I had cousins that lost everything. And, you know, that's a little bit of a different scenario yeah. than what's going on now. But, but a city was destroyed and uh, the army came in locked and loaded with with, you know, shoot to kill on the looters. And, you know, they didn't have any incidences and those that did happen never got reported. But the point is, is that as long as you're living on the face of this planet, you are not exempt from the bad things that can happen. Oh, and last time I checked, if we were signing up on the bad things list, I'm sure that every single person here and whoever's listening could make a whole list of the bad things that have happened to us. But how do you take them and make lemonade? That's what grit is all about, as is the other people that we've talked about. And how do we find this empowerment in the face of such devastating turmoil. Yeah. That's the you know, question. And, and when you were talking, I just had this image, Bill, back to that question of just hugging that person and helping that person to see that there's still love, even throughout these lessons. It's so much more important how we react to something than what happens to us. I fully believe in that. And it Absolutely. is easier said than done. But it does, yeah, it's just so, it, you know, it's so gratifying to ourselves when we can take a deep breath, step back and say, okay, now what can I do as a result of this? How can I take this experience and, and pay it forward in a positive kind of manner? And, you know, when you were talking about how do we, how do we even come to grips or come to terms with it that's stuff's still going to happen. I'm trying not to swear, you know, stuff's still going to happen in our life. And I remember back um, in 2010, my youngest brother took his life. Very sad. I still get teary, see? And he... Sorry about that, by yeah. the way. Heart yeah. goes out to you. Yeah. I still get teary over that because he was such a beautiful human being. And he... Who knows? You know, really, we think he was bipolar. We're not sure, you know, and that was the hardest thing, I think, to go through to just question yourself, like, how, you know, what could I have done? Is there anything that, you know, you could have done differently? And, and it probably isn't, you know, really, when you when you think about it, because you do your best. And I thought, wow, I've been through that. Okay, that was my biggest struggle. And then another brother committed suicide. Oh. 
Oh, and going into that, I just thought, okay, I know how to deal with this. I've been here before. I have... Nope, not at all. It still came home. It still was something that you had to grieve in a different way. You had to learn different lessons. The minute that you think <laughs> that you've got it, I think you're knocked on, you, you know, your butt to say, you Sorry. got more to learn. <laughs> you, know, you got more to go through. You, you got yeah, more you to make it you know? yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's so for people that are, yeah, are we going to still have things that happen in our life to us? Yeah, we are. You know, right now I do classroom training. So guess what? I'm not doing classroom training for a very long time. You know, my government contracts have ceased, my uh, state contracts have ceased till December 31st, not going back into the classroom. I could sit here and wallow and, and be upset and, and react in all of those ways, or I could just continue to put my heart out there and reach out and be generous to other people, whether I get paid or not, because quite frankly, this is my life work and I can't stop doing it. You know, it's like, so do, do I like to be on the, the video doing it? No, I like to be in person. You know, I'm a, a people person. I like to be there. But if this is all I have, then this is the way I'm going to do it. You know, and even the online training, my clients who have contracts with me have said, even that is not going to happen this year because we are so distracted with everything that we have to do to get back on track trainings out the window and they admit they need it more than anything. But you know, and it's so true. We are so distracted. You know, I, you know, one thing that you said earlier is, and, and I think that the listeners may want to hear your take on this because I, I personally think it's important. I can relate to it, but you talked about yoga and meditation and, and, you, and you, and, and, you know, hugging a person, you know, that, that intimate touch of really wanting to help. Tell us how yoga and meditation has helped you, Lori, through your gritty times. Back to patience. <laughs> you know, patience is, is probably one of the biggest things I work on with yoga and meditation and helping me to just be still, be there, be in the moment, feel it, cry if you need to. Don't be embarrassed with the tears, feel the 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 muscle that you're that you're trying to stretch and don't try to push it and force it but challenge it enough so that it's challenging you just enough to just be in that moment and when when i first tried meditating i remember just beating myself up because i couldn't stay right there in the moment and then someone along the way and i don't even remember which yogi it was that said uh, you know, the, the meditation said, just follow your thoughts and be with them. And don't, don't try so hard to, 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 to be a certain way. Just, you know, if you want to be present in the moment, just bring yourself back, but bring yourself back gently or have fun with it. Don't, don't be mad at yourself because you've gone out, you know, in this space and, you know, being, being present is one of those things that, present is just right here and I can't even put a time limit to it because as soon as I speak a word it's gone and it's in the past right and and the, and the future is out there and so the present is just right here and so when people say be in the present it's really just following where you are and where your attention is right so no no I love that you know the beauty of and I'm even thinking you're making me think the beauty of this conversation you know, when you're with some person like yourself that is completely authentic and vulnerable and you shared your story of your brothers, it makes the time go really fast. And, you know, because it's a joy to be around that kind of energy. Mm -hmm. um, how can people, a couple questions, I know we're getting towards the end of the hour, but how how can people get a hold of you, Lori? What do they need to do? Learn more about grit, but also... Tell us what the Lori Sudbrink mantra is. I know you've got one. Good question. 
You mean not get your grit together? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I mean, you know, what's, what's your mantra and how can people get a hold of you? And, and it truly has yeah. been, been an awesome conversation, but how, how to tell us yeah. that, that information. So to get a hold of me. Yeah. Um, the, the social media that I'm most active on is Facebook, Lori Sudbrink, L-A-U-R-I-E-S-U-D-B-R-I-N-K and um, LinkedIn. Um, so those two are most active on. My website is either leadingwithgrit.com or lauriesudbrink.com. It takes you to the same spot and you can sign yourself up for my free resources. So I, I put out a blog. Um, I'm one of those creatives, so I don't commit to once a week or once a month. I put it out when I feel like it quite regularly. So <laughs> that's, that's when I put the, the information out. And I have free resource library in there too that you can get um, you know, access to. And this is some of the tools that can help you. I have a, a planner that is a, a grit productivity planner that I've poured really my whole formula into this and it's an undated awesome. full year planner but it helps you to align with what's important in your life and create space in your life for the most important things um, and that can be found on amazon at amazon.com slash gritty stuff and I also have a book leading with grit so <laughs> Yeah. And my mantra truly is, I mean, it's, it's, it's get your grit together. You know, it's, it's living with grit. It's, you know, doing the best that you can. I don't know if I have one mantra. I love quotes. I have quotes all through my book. I have quotes all through my planner. I think they're very motivational and they help us to kind of think and, and, you know, be, be more self-aware. So. I see the I mantra that, up you know. on the wall, right back there behind you, Laurie. Love. <laughs> you know, you know, get your grit together. You, know? you, know, you can have so much yeah. fun with that too. Get your grit together. Yeah, make grit happen. <laughs> Give a grit. I like uh, holy grit. That's my that's I my love holy grit. I don't, <laughs> don't be walking in the grit. Get yourself <laughs> out of grit. Getting gritty with it. <laughs> you got grit on your face, you know, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Oh, but we absolutely <laughs> love you. And uh, I'm so glad that you reached out to us because you are the prototype human being of the planet that makes things better. And I know, and Bill knows, I can, well, he, he can speak for himself, but I know that the world is a better place because, because of Lori Sudbrink. And yeah, I second the motion. Yeah, it really just, <laughs> it happens, you know, I just, <laughs> I just love it. Now you got me going. So thank you for honoring us to be on our show. And thank you so much. Well, it's truly welcome. a pleasure to talk to people who are unafraid of the process. And Lori, thank you for that inspiring sort of, I don't want to say it's a message, but it's more about who you are. It's like you're living that place of being unafraid, you know, of, of what's going to happen, whatever that Bill, might be. Bill, <laughs> that, that what you just said is some deep grit. Yeah. That's some deep grit. <laughs> some love deep you, grit. love you. So thank you, Lori. Truly, it's thank been an honor. Thank you. Oh, you bet. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Aho Radio. Information we mentioned is probably in the show notes, but if we missed anything, please let us know and we'll get it added for you. Subscribe to the Aho Radio channel on YouTube to stay connected. And as always, we wish you health, success, and significance. Aho. Aho. Peace. Aho. Aho. Thank you. Aho.